Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome back to another episode of our Gems of War Let's Play. Today we're going to be upgrading some of the kingdoms, doing some stuff with the new event, and finally getting the dragon armor. So first things first, let's upgrade our two kingdoms here. We now have three additional magic kingdoms. Of course, upgrading every single one of these to 10, we'll be giving each of our troops an additional magic, as you can see here. They have now been raised by an additional one. And then as we go and head over and do this yet again, we'll be even one higher on that and quite fitting doing it on Karakaroff this week. And it is the event week for Karakaroff. And if we come back here, we should see a five there and then a four. So now everything we have has an additional three magic from having Zolkiri, Karakaroth, and Darkstone all to level 10. And of course, now we're working on Blighted Lands, which is currently the fourth uh, magic kingdom in the game which is all four of them so we're almost there we'll probably have that by the end of the week and now for something really really important to do as a free-to-play player you may have noticed we have not actually spent a single gem on this account and the main reason for this is there is something that we have been saving for and that of course is the dragon or celestial armor normally i would say go with the dragon armor both of which are a 500 gem armor both of which are the two best armors you can get in the game as far as free to play is concerned um one of them gives 50 percent to everything and 100 percent to souls and the other one gives 50 percent to everything and 100 percent to gold normally i go with the dragon armor first normally because uh gold is a lot more important uh, we need this to actually upgrade all of our kingdoms, which is a priority at the moment. Plus, we'll be able to help our guild some more and get keys and various other uh, gold-related things from that. So, the only thing that uh, Celestial Armor would really help us with is if we intend to do a lot of arena, because arena gives a lot of souls. But if we don't really intend to do that, we really don't have much of a need to use the Celestia or Celestial um, Armor. One thing to note is you did want to pay a little bit. There is... Um, the best armor in the game, which is the Death Knight pack, also pretty much the best pack in the entire game. Gives a bunch of keys, gives the 100% to all bonuses, but you won't really be needing, and of course we're going completely free to play. But if you wanted to skip having to spend like 500 or 1000 gems on the Dragon and Celestial armor, you could just get that instead. But of course we won't be because we are doing a free to play account. One thing to note, the next thing we spend after on our gems will be 50 bolts of gem keys. Um, buying them in 10 bulks, 1 bulks, 50 bulks, doesn't matter how many you use at once. It'll still give you the exact same um, drop rate and everything like that. But what does change is the price. They get slightly cheaper as you, you buy them uh, with gems in larger bulks. So right now, I'm actually going to be going through all of our keys. This is mainly because we need a giant spider or... Oh, wow, we get another Hellcat, really? Uh, because we need another... Uh, or we need a giant spider or a green slime. Um... Both of those two troops work very well with the two troops that... Oh, we got it. Wow. Well, I was just talking about that. But yeah, Giant Spider works really well with the two troops that just came out this week, which I'll be showing in a moment. But a Transformer selected mana color to purple, then summons a spider based on whatever its magic is. And it has a very, very good first trait, a magic link, which will give us even more magic or uh, more purple whenever we match them. So that will be very useful. Myriad, we don't really need. Uh, you can use them for treasure map farming, but Tyree is exponentially better, which we currently don't have, but we'll be getting her eventually. Um, let's take two little things and then do a 50 drop of this. Okay, nothing on that. Nothing on that. And let's see what we get from our 50. Maybe we can get our third legendary today. Who knows? Apothecary. I don't believe we had Apothecary, but let's see. Taraxis and Apothecary. Very interesting. What's kind of funny that we get them both at once. Because they actually synergize with each other if we want to use them in a team. Uh, Taraxis is a pretty good looping troop. Uh, mainly for doing damage to all enemies. Deals um, damage to all enemies and transforms all blue to brown. Uh, and that's at a 3 to 1 boost ratio. And can do quite a bit of decent damage if there are a lot of blue on the board. And Apothecary selects a gem. Turns them all to brown. And then cleanses all allies. It's basically like a mercy. Except better for earlier on in the game. Uh, Mercy uh, gets empowered, which allows it to do it on first turn, 
but it takes a lot of trade stones to actually get that up on her. So Apothecary is normally a better early game alternative, so that's nice that we got her instead of a Mercy. Uh, wow, quite a few other ones. Herdmaster. Herdmaster is a pretty good exploding troop, particularly with Soothsayer, Herdmaster, uh, Soothsayer, Crimson Bat, if you happen to have a Crimson Bat. That's probably his best purpose in the entire game. But he explodes a bunch of random yellow gems and then cleanses all allies. Kind of like Apothecary, except the explosion version. Uh, Lava Elemental, we'll actually, we got another one of him, but we're actually going to be using him later this week. Uh, because we're going to be able to get his trade stones, and of course we'll be going over trade stones more uh, in this series. We haven't actually traded anything yet, but we will be. Um, Charm, Lamia, you don't really use that much. Earlier on in the game, she's kind of okay. Uh, Charm basically just makes a uh, enemy uh, deal their attack damage to the... Um, to the allies above and below it but it's only directly above and below it. if there's like a troop dead in between it actually won't do any damage to that and a manticore very very powerful on consoles though it did get nerfed pretty hard on pc and mobile and consoles will probably get that nerf too it stuns an enemy drains their mana by seven and then gains attack based on its magic that wasn't nerfed but what was nerfed is um the fact that he has a fast trait he used to have empowered which allowed him to cast on the very first turn but now it's only fast, so you'll start with 4 mana if you haven't fully traded, instead of the full 9 that he previously did. But he does have Impervious, still a pretty good troop, uh, just not as viable as he used to be. Thorn Knight we won't really need. He's a cheap alternative, but we really need an Entangle. But unless we like desperately need a Tangle for some reason, uh, Tangle uh, prevents attack gains on whatever troop is entangled. Plus, it reduces their attack to 0 until it just cleanses off, but you just deal some damage to them. Uh, removes all the reds, boosts it at a 3 to 1, and then uh, entangles them. And I believe that's all the new drops we got. But we do have some gem keys here. I'm not going to use the event keys though. Uh, we got the giant spider, no reason to use them. Abarath isn't that good. Um, so we won't really be needing it. So let's see what we can get off these gem keys. Uh, let's just pull it off. And nope, all repeats. Nothing new. Uh, another anointed one, which we don't really need. A runic. Spirit Fox, I guess. Spirit Fox and Chimera is probably the best two drops from here. That we'll actually be able to use. Uh, maybe even the Winter Wolf. But um, we already have copies of all of them. So that won't help us too much. So anyways, let's head over now to the shop. This is pretty important because the glory rewards for once this week are actually very, very good. Void Pearl is going to be helping us out a lot. Especially how buffed it is this week. It's going to be absolutely insane. It has the high durability in the game. Even more than Fortress Gate, which is very nice. But what we're going to be using it for is being able to summon any daemon in the entire game which is going to be pretty useful because we can just infinitely tank with all of its summons. So we're going to get one of these. We also get 20 souls, additional souls per battle, anytime that we use a void portal in our team. And let's go now to the Dark Troll. Dark Troll is like the, all of the other trolls. It doubles a specific color. This one doubles purple, which is pretty good. And on top of that, it even gains souls and quite a decent amount of souls too. Uh, it's also pretty good to fully trade, though, how, how early in the game that we are, there's, uh, it would be a waste of trade stones to try to trade an epic. Pretty much no epic is worth trading in the entire game uh, below like level 200 or so, mainly because their cost to how effective their traits are is not a good ratio. Normally, you just go without them and spend them on legendaries or something else instead. But let's get a copy of him. Might even need to get a second copy of him because we are getting two arcane lava trade stones. These we'll likely be using on our um, Lava Elemental later this week. But, oh, I forgot. We get a little bit more keys from these. Let me go use those real quick. Highly doubt we'll get anything good from these, but we might as well go and check them. Let's get our little resources, our trade stone accumulation, which we'll be using soon. And, yep, nothing good. Okay, so let's go now and build a team or two. But before we get into some teams, we did have some problems with the second half of this recording the other day, so now we have a little bit more progress. So with that progress, we can finally go and now upgrade Blighted Lands and finally get our last Magic Kingdom with all of the gold that we got during a stream. So there we go. We got now have every single Magic Kingdom in the entire game upgraded now to level 10. And now we'll start moving on to all of the Attack Kingdoms like Blackhawk, Wild Plains, Pride Lands, and Fars of Thorns. And now let's also do our keys. Yesterday we ended up getting a bunch of keys. We now have the 46. You get these from getting 1.9k writing in PvP. Pretty easy to do in a single day if you have a decent enough team. And it looks like we got another Legendary that we'll need to be using on our very first drop. And let's just click through all these, see what other things we get. So, whoa! 
quite a few interesting drops here. The most interesting of which is definitely Emperor Corvash. Not only have we been getting a lot of brown blue trait stones that we'll be able to use to get him, since pretty much everyone sets their home kingdom earlier on in the game as the default of Broken Spire, which does give primarily brown and blue trait stones, so we actually have quite a bit. We might actually be fairly close to be able to trait Emperor Corvash, which is pretty good because Emperor Corvash is basically, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the best brown blue in the entire game to trade. So that's pretty lucky that we did end up getting him. Uh, he deals true damage to the first two enemies, stuns them, and drains all of their mana. Very, very powerful. The only bad thing is stun we don't really use that much earlier on in the game. Stun only prevents uh, anyone that you stun on the enemy team to not be able to use their traits. And since we haven't really gotten into traits, haven't really started trading anything up for the most part, we won't really be able to utilize that. Hydra here, uh, we won't be able to use too well either, uh, especially just right now. It does have a nice boost ratio based on how much HP it is missing, which is pretty beneficial. It's kind of like a Rowane, except a HP version of it that only does it based on how much damage it has taken from its HP, but it's a little bit inconsistent. You have to drag it down to a fairly low HP to really be able to utilize it. And for the most part, you won't really be using a Hydra. Herald of Chaos, though, is very, very powerful earlier on in the game. You can actually get him from completing the Blighted Lands quest line, which we just leveled up that kingdom to max. Um, but he destroys a row, uh, does some damage, and, with, and then ra uh, reduces a random skill. And then that is boosted based on the blue destroyed. He is very, very powerful with something like a Valkyrie or anything really that can make blues. Mainly Valkyrie just because it doesn't have mana conflict with him. Uh, but the main reason for this is that boost ratio boosts both of these. So if you destroy even one blue, it's going to not only be making him do two additional damage, it's also going to be able to do uh, two additional stat reduction. If that hits HP, you are in a good position. HP, magic attack, any of those are really going to be decent. Armor, not so much though. Uh, Desert Mantis is actually an interesting drop. We probably won't be needing it that much, but uh, it doesn't really need to be leveled that much to be fully utilized. It creates 8 yellow and 8 blue uh, gems on the board. Of any single troop that can uh, create 2 or more colors on the board, uh, Desert Mantis actually has the lowest mana cost of any of them. So you may be able to utilize that sometime in the future. Foil Engineer, basically useless. This gives all your allies 5 armor, and then uh, summons either a Bomb Bot, Flame Cannon, and, or tank bot and that's based on magic that five armor is static though that even though they're both happen to be five uh, That armor boost is not actually based on the magic that uh, magic only uh, Determines the level of the bomb bot the flame cannon or the tank bot uh, none of which are particularly strong wandering monk also pretty weak uh, main reason it's a stun and It's just like many other troops where it deals damage to an enemy places a status effect on them and then double if they Already have that status effect on them and out of all of them uh, that do something like that. Wandering Monk is one of the weaker ones, particularly for early on in the game. So we don't ever really need to use her. And that is all of our drops. So let's go now and... Oh wait, do we have some gem keys? Yes, we do. Let's actually see what's in these four gem keys. And then we'll go into our battles. Okay, nothing new. Nothing really worth it to get duplicates of. So let's actually go into a battle now with the Void Portal. Again, uh, the Void Portal, we will be getting... Um, 20 additional souls every single battle that we use a void portal in our team this week. One other thing that I did, which kind of got lost in recording, uh, which I wasn't able to recover, is the giant spider. We finally got our first trait ever, which is on the giant spider. You really want to be extremely conservative with how you use your trait stones in this game because you have a very limited amount. And if you trade something, you might not be able to trade something else. And uh, the main reason we went for the magic link on our spider is this is really good synergy for anything that ever uses purple on our team. And since we happen to have a dragon soul and there's a lot of other good purples in this game, I figured we go for this first trait. Magic link is one of the better ones. Some other traits that are normally pretty good to get if you see them on a troop is leadership, stone skin, impervious, uh, any form of link on them. All of these are very, very powerful traits. And the sooner they have it in their lineup, the better they normally are and the cheaper they are to be able to trade them as well. Such as this week, uh, it's pretty good to trade up a golem. He has the cheapest, um, he's a common that uh, most of you probably have. He has the cheapest stone skin in the entire game, getting it on his second trait as a common, which is the lowest cost you'll ever have to do to get a stone skin like that. And he has a 50% bonus this week because he is a construct and a... Um, and a uh, Kerkaroff troop. So uh, that is something to consider if you needed a really good tank. Plus he's still good for tanking even uh, without that 
extra bone is fairly cheap to get so what we're going to be doing here is using the double on our troll trying to get all of our everything up uh, we'll get a bunch of extra turns and now we can just use whatever purple we have to do a lot of damage if you happen to not have a dragon soul something that you can put in this team that would be a pretty good replacement is any of the purple full aoe weapons any of the purple weapons that hit all enemies you wouldn't have as much board control but you would still be able to get quite a bit of the damage out maybe even more damage because right now we're locked at about uh or exactly 11 damage every single dragon soul cast but your weapon might actually be able to do more than that especially if you unlocked a creeping death or something like that creeping death you unlock at 250 wins on the necromancer class we haven't really gotten into classes yet on this account we will be in the future doing quest lines and stuff i've seen some of you asking and like why haven't i been doing quest lines and stuff like that the main reason why we haven't been doing quests is uh level actually is somewhat dependent in uh it's one of the few factors that gets uh considered when you do pvp battles and if you keep a lower level for arena and pvp earlier on in the game both of which will be easier uh, when you're at a lower level so um, questing actually levels you up more than anything in this entire game which is why I've kind of been staying away from them initially we will be getting around to them as well as many other builds that we'll be showing for earlier game on this account but we're going to be doing this a battle again another one uh, this time we're actually um, going to let our first troop die so we can actually get something from the void portal Unfortunately, our recording did fail the other day, and we end up getting a death, which was absolutely insane. A level 20 mythic death in first slot. Uh, one thing to note about the summon on the void portal is that it is level capped based on the rarity. For example, if we were to do, let's say, our Hellcat that we have. I believe we have two Hell, uh, copies of Hellcat. Doesn't matter if we even have any. But uh, Hellcat is only an epic, which can have a cap of level 18. Uh, this magic right here is what determines its level, but if it's capped based on its rarity, then it will not be able to go all the way up there. And of course, 20 is the highest, because that is the cap for a mythic. But if we were to summon something like a Hellcat, as I said, it would only be level 18. If we could somehow summon a Dragon Soul, which this doesn't actually summon, but that would only summon as a 19, because it's only a legendary right now. And similar as these rares, if we somehow, let's just say, if we summon this, even though that's not something it could summon, it would summon as a level 16, because the caps are uh, level 15. 15 for common, 16 for rare, uh, 17 for ultra rare, 18 for epic, uh, 19 for legendary, and of course 20 for mythic. But there are quite a few daemon mythics that we will be able to utilize with this. Uh, I do want him to actually kill us. He does have a little bit of a uh, low attack. Might need to let him attack us several times for really get it out. But then we will be able to summon uh, just like we want. Hopefully we can get a mythic. It won't really matter in this particular battle what we get because we'll easily be able to win. Uh, it is very likely that we will get a higher rarity though. Uh, I believe there are about five daemon mythics. Like uh, I almost want to say a dozen legendary daemons, maybe more like ten. But there's a lot of them at higher rarity. There's only one daemon common if I'm not mistaken and very few other uh, drops that can really get in the way of us getting a good daemon out of our portal so we'll just keep letting him do stuff like that that was actually the weapon i was referring to earlier too when i was saying oh come on we're getting too good of luck i don't want i wanted to kill us uh but that was the weapon i was referring to that you could replace our dragon soul with this team you can use something like the wicked scythe or any of the other um scythes are in this game um they did do a little bit of damage but you do have to keep in mind that is not using the correct class nor is it uh nor does he or she have any of the um magic kingdoms because based on that kind of value i don't believe it actually has any of them upgraded so right here we're just going to keep letting it poke at us we need to get our first troop dead so we can actually get a void portal summoned um this void portal particularly this week is extremely tanky forget if i already mentioned it but it does have the highest durability of any troop in the game uh even if you exclude the 50 percent bonus this w title was a previously to fortress gate but it does uh at max level gain throughout its all of its leveling three additional durability and durability is just hp plus armor is what durability is considered in this game but right over here we're just going to keep taking random moves i'm trying to make it kill us though that is not working out that well it would appear so uh, I'll let him take that red. That would actually be beneficial. We would get an extra turn out of it, but okay, maybe I let's take that. But we're just not going to take that mainly because I need him to kill our thing, so we can use our portal. I also uh, with this team, uh, green slime can sometimes actually be better. We don't happen to have it. We're using giant spider as a substitute. The only problem I found lately with using giant spider with this team is we will sometimes summon a spider there because of course if an empty slot is there it'll summon the spider and then 
If we don't have the mana on this and we try giving it with the spider, well, we're going to make a little spider there that will get in the way of our cast, which is not that good. So he'll do another Wicked Scythe. Uh, I'm trying to give him another skull if that would be possible. Please, that's not going to kill us yet. One more skull will be enough, though. So we'll just let it poke. Come on, take a skull, take a skull. Get, let, give us a summon. Okay, there we go. That will be the skull that we need or the damage that we need. So he'll do that. Definitely will kill it out regardless of where he casts that. Oh, there we go. Seven. Or maybe it did matter where he cast it. Wow. Nope. Oh, wow. He didn't get a single one of the boost ratio. Every single yellow he hit would have been two additional damage. But we can summon this again. And what do we get? We get a legendary. And as I said earlier, uh, with the cap, um, of course, it doesn't matter that we have it. Of course, Inferno King, we do not actually own an Inferno King. Uh, the traits are based on whatever you do have it traded up to, though. So, for example, if we somehow got a giant spider, which this can't actually cast or summon, but if we were to somehow summon a giant spider from something, it would come in with only a magic link. It wouldn't have the other two traits, and the level that would come in would be based on the summoner's magic. But with this, as you can see, even though we have 24 for the magic, his level is only level seven or level 19. Uh, this is because legendaries can go only go up to level 19. Same as why when you get a mythic troop, if you happen to get a mythic as a drop from the portal or just from anything else, the reason it caps out as 20 is because that's as high as a mythic can go. So nothing, even if they have the higher magic, nothing can actually go above. Uh, level 20 in this game. So we'll go and take this out on red. We do have Inferno King here So even though we don't have a single Inferno King, we're going to be able to use him as if we do uh, he converts all um, Brown to red and all green to skulls We're gonna be able to utilize that right there to take those skulls and that will pretty much be matched uh, He's actually a really good legendary to have earlier on in the game Unfortunately, we don't actually have him but we did get to use him real quick. But all that damage that we just saw there was from is his split damage. He has a very, very high split damage, particularly for earlier on in the game. It seems excessively high, but he'll get the double convert. He gets the split damage and he has a fairly high attack and we were easily able to take it out with that. But anyways, that will wrap it up for this video. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.